Okay, in this module, we want to talk about the nodes connectivity and also the HA interconnect and the cluster interconnect. So take a look at this picture here. So we have node one and node two. Uh, as we talked before, we have different methods. We have one single node, we have two nodes switchless, and we have a switch cluster and we have the metro cluster. So now imagine that we have just two nodes that they are connected to each other. So in the picture you can see here we have something called cluster interconnect. So there's one cluster interconnect connection between two nodes. I want to highlight this one. I'm talking about right now this connection here. So there is an HA interconnect between two nodes. If I want to explain HA interconnect properly, I should say HA interconnects connect the two nodes of each HA pair for all controllers. So these are just two, two controllers. So imagine we have uh, so one controller here, another one here. So these are just one HA pairs. They should be connected to each other in a way to have HA a connection so there should be one cable let's see from here to here to have uh, the HA pair connection for this is for one HA pair for another HA pair in the cluster you also should have the same thing so they should be connected to each other so the connections are diff I mean it it depends on the model that you are using it may be connected internally I mean if you have let's say you have uh, a chassis with two controllers so uh, the connections are internally provided over the backplane in the chassis of a dual controller. So this is one chassis uh, and we have two controllers, dual controllers. They are connected internally to each other and they have HA connections. Otherwise, if they are on the separate, I mean, uh, chassis depends on the model and enclosure, uh, you may have an infinite band connections. I mean, that's a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection between two controllers for the HA interconnects. But definitely nodes, they should be able to talk to each other. So if they are one enclosure, one chassis, and two controllers and dual controllers, they are connected in the backplane usually. So you're not seeing any connections or any cables for, for the HA interconnect. But why we need this HA interconnect? So there are different scenarios for them. So most of the time for the failover, uh, we use this HA interconnect. This connection is for failover, for talking to each other. Knows for the SFO, for, uh, for search failover, they talk to each other. It doesn't matter if it's uh, negotiated or it's a not negotiated uh, failover. I mean, if it's planned or unplanned. There is, a, there is a communication over this link between two nodes. Another thing is heartbeat. They're actually sending heartbeat to each other. And node one is saying to node two that I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And when you're not seeing I'm alive, node two start doing any, a takeover. And that's good for the HA purposes. Uh, so heartbeat's also here. Uh, the cop, we use the, this link for the copying the NVRAM. So that's that's actually another thing that we, we talked about this one but uh, we use this one for copying the NVM. Another one is disk firmware. Uh, when you're upgrading, usually the disk firmware is on one node, the other nodes shouldn't do anything related to the disk, so it can understand that something going something is going on right now on the other node. So they talk to each other on the uh, inter-connect uh, cluster link for disk firmware and some versioning information. So they, 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 they exchange some information together in the uh, uh, for the versioning purposes so that's mostly it for the uh for the HA interconnect so there's one cable between uh two nodes i want to emphasize again that we have two nodes and these two nodes they should be connected to each other in a way for having heartbeat, for failover on plan and plan, for copying NVRAM, for upgrading the disk firmware, and for, I mean, exchanging the versions uh, information. So there should be a way they, they connect to each other, whether it's internally or it's through an infinite band 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. That's just for HA uh, interconnect. That's it. Another thing that I intentionally put this one here is cluster interconnect. So imagine that we have two nodes cluster. 
one edge a pair so they need they need one edge a connection to each other that's it for the hard bit for the failover for copying nvram for disk firmware for version information that's it so whether it's internal or whether it's through an infinity band connection a 10 gigabit ethernet i i just repeat it several times another thing that we need we need another cluster interconnect and usually we need cluster interconnect when we have more than two nodes imagine now we have four nodes we have two ha pairs definitely these two nodes they should be connected to each other in a way for ha interconnect whether internally or through that infinity band 10 gigabit ethernet but right now we have two ha pairs one here and one here we have four nodes and we in order to uh, for us to manage these four nodes as a one single cluster we need to have a cluster interconnect network also so we need to have a switch let's say here which it should be redundant but i'm just drawing a basic diagram here and these nodes should be connected to the switch in this case we can manage the whole of these four nodes as a single cluster okay so this is ha interconnect this is cluster interconnect network and definitely we have another network i just draw it here and this one is client networks it's a network that the servers your database server your file server use this one for access to storage so there should be another cable from this guy here this guy here, this guy here, and this one also here. And let's say this is your server. And the server is trying to access the storage. It is connected to this one. And here's the data flow. Going to the search and a node one, for example. Or it can reach to another node and from node one to other node. Even it can use this link go to another node or same other node. So I want to emphasize that there are different things here. An HA interconnect, it's completely different from the cluster interconnect. So you should be aware of this one. In another slide, if I go to the next one, uh, let me close this. Here, I just put the simple scenario of uh, having disk shelves connectivity to each other. I don't want to actually talk about these ones, this information a lot. Uh, usually, when you want to administrate the NetApp storage, the storage is implemented for you by, I mean, a partner company and to start managing it. But it's a, always a good idea to know how you can cable storage together. So this is the, the picture for the disk shelf connectivity. On the left side, you can see the uh, single controller, and on the right side, uh, you can see uh, uh, HA pair, and you have two nodes in their uh, right side. And this is the best practice. So in the single one, we are going to uh, connect one cable uh, to the first shelf, and then we, go, we are going to daisy chain to the latest one and come back to the control again. It's the same idea on the two controllers on this one, which is the best practice and recommended. We are going to connect it to the first one and daisy chain it down here. And look at this one, it just goes back to the second controller. And doing it for the first, for the second controller too, again, same thing, we are going to daisy chain it and back up here. So it's just a matter of how you're going to connect the disk shelves together in an app storage. It's always a good idea to know how you're going to connect them together. Another thing I would, I would like to talk about it if I go to the next slide, it's let's start with uh, just powering on the storage and start working with it. But before that, uh, we have to know some basic connectivity, some communication ports that we need to know. We have the console port, we have this SP and we call it service processor and we have the management network. So look at the picture here. So you have a console port on your storage so you can you can connect your console port and you can it's a serial connection you can see your on top console directly another way for managing your uh, storage usually we have a e0m port with the wrench on it and so you can start that one and when you're going to connect to the, that that connection 
there is a virtual Ethernet switch on the behind behind of that port, which you can access your e E0M port or you can access your service processor. With, with the service processor, it's like uh, it's like other technologies uh, like HP ILO uh, or other technologies that you can manage your storage and you can access your console remotely you can power off or power on your storage with the sp with, with the service processor so if you have a physical access to your storage, so you can use the, the console cable if you don't have physical access you can always use the management port and get access to the service processor if you access the service processor it's like you are you are having a physical access to the console you can start managing your storage Anyway, uh, we usually have uh, the way that we access to the storage is we are going to access the cluster uh, IP address or cluster um, a logical interface and we start managing the ONTAP through the network or we can use the service processor and also the console for, the, for this management. So the next thing that we want to do then it's just we want to install a simulator and configure a two nodes cluster. We'll check how we can con configure the the storage from the console, how we can access it through the web GUI or graphical user interface, and how we can SSH to the uh, actual storage, and just get familiar with the environment. And if you don't know anything about the SSH, I'll talk a little bit about the SSH. I have a separate video for SSH access to the Linux machines and how it works, but uh, that would be really easy for you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll... See you in the next one.